Well, welcome this morning to Waypoint. We are so glad to have you here. Thank you for worshiping with us, and please continue to do so. favorite things to do is to um, look up the definition of a word that I already feel like I know. Um, it's kind of the nerdy part of me. There's a lot of nerdy parts of me, actually, but that's one of the nerdy parts of me. And um, the, the theme that we kind of went with with worship today, and it was kind of by accident and kind of, by, kind of on purpose, was um, redemption. And, and so I looked up the word redeem and what it means to be redeemed. And you know, there, we know what it means, but when you try to explain it, like if you were trying to explain it to a child, you kind of start to stumble over how to explain it. And when you look up the definition, there's all kinds of definitions, but it's to buy back or to free from what distresses or harms or, or to free from captivity with a payment or a ransom or to change for the better or to remove the obligation of a payment. And the line of the next song, one of the lines of the next song we're going to sing says, No guilt competes with innocence crucified. 
No grave can hold what your grace has justified. And I love that line because it reminds me that God's grace, his unmerited favor, his favor that we don't deserve is poured out on us. And that is what redemption is all about. That's why we're redeemed. That's how we're redeemed. And this is, this is without doubt one of my very favorite songs, along with the song we just sang. So please sing it with us.
continue this conversation with God and just as we we sing these songs these praises uh, we're going to get a chance to to pray together and to communicate with our Heavenly Father I want to let you know a couple things that you'll hear me pray for and it's families that I've been in communication with over the past 24 hours but it's uh it's some long-term needs that we've been praying for and wanted to continue praying for uh, one is for Jen and Casey Andrews and uh, through Jen's pregnancy uh, she gave birth to twins last night at 24 weeks of pregnancy so uh, I wanted to, to let you know that Cassidy and Jackson were born last night at about 8 o'clock uh, together and so amen and this is something to be celebrated 
and and obviously you know uh, be praying for Jen and Casey but these these babies were born a little bit earlier than what they'd like and uh, everybody seems to be doing fine right now but they've got a journey ahead of them and we want to pray and continue this conversation with God in praying for for Jackson and for Cassidy as well as for Jen and for Casey uh, they'll, they'll be in the hospital for some time but uh, but let's lift them up in in prayer also wanted to let you know that we're, we're, uh, you'll hear me prayer pray for for Carter Peterson and Carter is, is in our congregation he's an 11 year old boy and uh, just a great great uh, great great guy he has epilepsy and uh, and they thought that they had medication under control for Carter and uh, had a couple of uh, pretty bad seizures over the past day or so and so this is just something where the, the family's asking for prayer and we want to we want to pray on behalf of of little Carter and and to lift him and and his parents Mark and Amy and their family up to to our Heavenly Father and we have this awesome privilege even as we meet together to lift up our prayers and petitions to God who knows what we need even before we ask so let's bow our heads and let's uh, let's talk with our with our Lord Father in heaven Lord we we praise you and God we thank you so much for your presence in this place and Lord, just as we sang about, God, we, we thank you that you are our redeemer. God, that you do this amazing work in our lives, work that we could never do on our own. God, we thank you so much for this relationship that we have with you. God, we thank you so much that you, you care more than we ever could on our own. Lord, thank you for your plan. Thank you for your purposes. And Lord, thank you that we can put our entire trust in you. And so, Lord, as we mentioned, Lord, we want to lift up these prayer requests to you. Lord, I pray for for Cassidy and for Jackson. I thank you so much for these, these little lives and, and Lord, for, for the fact that you designed them and created them. God, we know that you have a purpose for them. And so, Lord, I pray that you would, you would help them to, to be healthy, to stay healthy, to grow strong. Lord, I pray that you would bless doctors and nurses as, as they are under their care. Lord, I pray for, for Jen and Casey, and this has obviously been a roller coaster for them. Uh, Lord, may they have joy in this, in this uh, experience. Lord, may they uh, find peace and rest in you. God, we want to lift up uh, Carter to you. We thank you for, for his life and, again, for the fact that he is fearfully and wonderfully made, designed by you. And, Lord, we, we want to lift up this, uh, this little boy to you and with these seizures that he's having. And, Lord, I just pray that you would, um, you would help him, God. Restore him, uh, be his strength. Uh, and, and, Lord, just uh, give, give Mark and Amy and family and those, those uh, caring for him. Give them wisdom as far as how they can help Carter the most. And God, I, even as I pray for these prayer requests, I know that uh, across this room, there's prayer requests that are, are unspoken or, or are such a burden uh, to the people here. And so, Lord, I, I lift those up. And Lord, I just pray that you would work as only you can. Lord, help us this week. Help us as we go from this place to be your hands and feet. Lord, help us to show love to a world that needs it. Help us to be a part of your plan, being your witnesses, just as you have called us to. And Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. 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 You may be seated. And I want to ask the ushers and those serving us by passing the offering place to come forward at this time. And as they, as they do that, I, I want to share with you just a couple of quick announcements. And the very first one is Oakland Hope is one of our partners uh, that helps people in crisis in, in Oakland County and beyond. And Oakland Hope is, uh, is a great partner. And they, something that we've committed to is helping there on the first Saturday of each month. So that's coming up on August 5th. Just an invitation for that. Uh, Bill Ballard is here. Greg Stearns is here, and uh, as well as myself. If you need more information on Oakland, help, Oakland Hope and how you can help out, just, uh, just let one of us know. I'd love to, love to point you in that direction. They've also got some cool promos going on there uh, for their um, thrift store, and so you're invited to take part in that. A, a special one that I wanted to make sure I, I spent some time on this morning is to celebrate you. 
and uh, and as a staff. I sit in, and there's people that work behind the scenes. There's people that work, uh, you, you know, visibly and, and invisibly to us, and that do so much work, whether it be cutting the lawn uh, as a way of, of donating, whether it be working in the nursery, whether it be doing some extra cleaning in the kitchen, whether it be setting up things or being there with teens or helping out with kids or, or doing usher duties behind the scenes here leading praise music there's so many different ways that you guys volunteer to make all that we do happen and, and let alone volunteering at different places like Oakland Hope and beyond so you guys today we wanted to celebrate and just you know how could we possibly ever how could we possibly ever say thank you enough for what you do as, as volunteers. But I wanted to do two, two things today uh, as a staff help put this together. But if you have volunteered at all in the past year here at Waypoint, whether it be at a check-in desk or with kids or cleaning things or, or, or fixing something that's broken or, or just whatever way you volunteered, would you just raise your hand, even if it was for, for just one hour, one time? I don't know if we can get some house lights on, but can you give it up for this crew of volunteers? And, and guys, there are so many people that, that contribute to, to the mission and vision of Waypoint and who we are and what, what we're trying to do. So as a, as a way of celebrating this, you volunteers, uh, we've got an ice cream uh, cart out there in the foyer, and so if you volunteered at all, you guys get first uh, first dibs on ice cream there. Okay, <laughs> so it, just a little, it's, and just a little, uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait for the service to be done. And it, <laughs> this is just a little thank you. You deserve so much more. But in brainstorming together, we just wanted to, to make some kind of attempt, and there there should be plenty. Although uh, a lot of people here, and by the way, scooch in if you don't mind. Uh, if, if there's still people looking for, for seats, help them find a seat. Uh, but but uh, volunteers get ice cream first, and then uh, after they're done with that, anybody can hop up there and grab some ice cream. So that is just a way to celebrate you and, and what you've done. And there's, you guys, this next year's coming. There's plenty of ways to volunteer. This is a great segue into our next announcement because we are prepping for VBS this week. And uh, you guys know Pastor Carrie and her heart for VBS and, and, uh, and kids. You guys see her, her enthusiasm is contagious. So would you give it up for Pastor Carrie? <laughs> to stand up and, and before you this morning because I've been to my second Maker Fun Factory va Vacation Bible School. As, as you know, we've been talking about how um, several churches in the community have shared resources and have prayed together and have supported one another's ministry to kids in our community. And the second church, River of Life Church in Clarkston, just finished theirs on Friday evening and Kyle and I were there and got to see some of the fun things that they've been doing all week and the ways that God has been moving. So thank you for their prayer, your prayers on their behalf. And uh, so we are eight days away from our grand opening celebration of Vacation Bible School. Woo -hoo! I'm so excited. I just have a couple of details for you. Those of you who are volunteering, thank you so very much. This could not happen without you. And I'm so excited for the team that God has called and put together. And just a reminder that we are having a meeting this Thursday night to pray together, to celebrate together, and to get all our details together so that we're ready when these hundred kids come in. And along with those hundred kids, we don't have quite a hundred yet. We need hundred. We want to tip that scales. We want to go beyond a hundred. So if you have not registered yet, please do so. It is a free vacation Bible school to kids entering kindergarten through kids entering sixth grade. So if you know somebody that fits that bill, get them signed up. We have paper registrations out in the foyer. You can sign up on our website. We have a link. We also have a link on our Facebook page. So any way you want to uh, sign, sign someone up for Vacation Bible School, please do so. Miss Alicia Metama does our registration. She puts everybody into great crews. 
and she does a fabulous job and she will do a fabulous job if you show up Monday morning and say I'd like to get in a crew but she will do an even more fabulous job if she gets a heads up ahead of time so if you could let her know that would be awesome the last thing that I wanted to um, mention is that our some of our kids have been showing off the creativity that God has given them in preparation for Vacation Bible School, and they have handcrafted some robots. And they are out in the foyer, and it was kind of a little family contest thing, and there's a little reward for the, the robot that gets the most votes. And I need your help, because I know every single person who made those robots, but you don't. So what I'd like for you to do is as service ends, as you go out there and you're talking and chatting, if you could just stop by the table, look at the robots that are there, and there's a little cup in front of each robot, and there's a basket of pennies. If you could just take one penny, only one penny, please, and pick the robot that you like the best and drop it in that cup. And then that way it'll be kind of random, and whoever gets the most pennies in their cup will be our winner. So if you could do that, and then those those robots will decorate our snack table during the week of Vacation Bible School. So the kids themselves made some of our decorations this year. So cool. All right, I, I want to make sure, because I, I think there was four things I wanted to say, and now I feel like I didn't say them all. Nope, I did say them all. Awesome, thank you very much. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We are so glad you are here with us this morning, and it is my privilege to stand before you this morning and, and just say we're going to continue this incredible um, celebratory kind of morning th this morning, but I, I will tell you that, uh, as I have often said before, that this service is going to be a little different than the norm, okay? And, and yeah, we like to say that here a lot. Uh, one reason is, you know, that th here in our summer schedule, we're doing the one service thing, and so we are, we are packed from wall to wall, and this is so cool that, that, this, that you guys are all here to experience it's a service like this. Um, also being one service, Pastor Chris, I was just doing the math. This is my first time doing the one service thing. That means that there's no next service coming in like right behind us, so I can go as long as I want. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> For those of you that don't know me, that'll be, I'll be pushing it to hit 25 minutes. Okay, so... <laughs> So anyway, um, but there are, there's just so much that, that we want to, to celebrate with you guys, and the worship team did such a great job just teeing it up perfectly. The net team, thank you guys so much for that. Um, with, with what God's been doing, I believe, in the life of our church. So uh, Carrie and I had the, the privilege of spending this past week with uh, about 106 uh, junior explorer campers, fourth through sixth graders. And while we were doing that with them, that was Sunday through Friday, while we were doing that, uh, Melanie Woods was the, the speaker for the, the teen camp that was going on there also. So um, Waypoint was well represented. We, and we had a lot, of kids, a lot of kids from Waypoint there with us this past week too. Uh, just as a side note, I also just wanted to mention too, another camp that was going on just this past week that we had, I think, seven of our teens that were there was the TFC camp that was being held in Spring Arbor. So um, again, they were, they were in, the, in the midst of learning all about you know, a new season of worship and ministry and, and uh, getting ready to go around the, the conference area um, as they lead worship. So that was really cool too. The, the passage that we were focused on this past week was from Proverbs 4.23, and we'll put it up there on the, on the screen for you. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. And from there, uh, we kind of launched into an above all else kind of space theme kind of thing. And, and Carrie and I, uh, we didn't get to sit in on the teen chapels, but, teen chapels, but Carrie and I did our best to, to kind of incorporate some, some fun space factoids, you know, with each of our chapel times um, to go along kind of with that theme. So uh, just, just as, as, as a sample here really quick, uh, something that you might need to know should you ever travel in space is the speed of sound, okay? So this is where we went with this, okay? So the speed of sound, here's what you need to know. Apparently, normal earth conditions, speed of sound in air is 767 miles per hour, okay? Um, I thought it was lower than that. So but yeah, it's, it, my mark's a little higher now for breaking the sound barrier. Um, so, but if, if, you are, if you're underwater, guess what? Sound actually travels faster underwater than it does through air. So 2,863 miles per hour through water, which is just insane. And, and I'm, I don't know, I get, apparently that's how whales can talk so well to each other underwater because sound travels better. Um, 
And then also didn't really know this one, but if you're going through land, if you're listening through land, you know, there really is some, you know, some truth to that Indians putting their ear to the ground kind of thing, like, apparently. So what does that say? 13,421 miles per hour through land. That's just amazing. And again, of course, we were in the space, the whole space theme and stuff. So I said, what if we had a planet that was completely made out of diamond? I mean, it was just diamond around to the core. Guess what? even faster. It's like 26,000 miles per hour, which is just crazy speeds, you know, for a sound to travel. So, giving all of that information, where would you think, you know, how, you know, the sound would fall, the speed of sound would fall in space? Faster, medium, slower? Um, yeah, the truth is, yep, some of you are already saying it, that, that uh, the answer is, it doesn't. Because space is silent because apparently there aren't enough molecules for the sound waves to bounce off of up there. So you wouldn't hear, you know, stuff when you're up in space. Which brings us to an interesting question. I think I put this in there. If a tree falls in space, does it make a sound? <laughs> and the, kid, the kids all answered that with a resounding no on multiple levels, Pastor Kyle. It just, it's just not going to happen. Um, but, but anyway, back to our verse in Proverbs 4.23. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. You don't have to listen to the radio very long before you hear a song that's about someone's heart, right? And there have been countless songs and poems and rhymes written about the heart over the years. Uh, I grabbed just a quick sample of one that I remembered from several years ago from, from a, a, a movie that was popular at the time. And uh, this, the name of the song is Follow Your Heart. It's from the Thumbelina movie. I don't know if anybody ever watched it. We, we had it in our house, yes, so we watched Thumbelina. Well, so here's, here's a short clip from Thumbelina. It's impossible. Impossible? Nothing is impossible. Yeah, sure to do impossible. If you follow your heart, <laughs> your dreams will fly on magical wings when you follow your heart. If you have to journey far, here's a little trick. You don't need a guiding star. Trust your ticker. Get there quicker. <laughs> You're sure to do Okay, so the second verse, and I didn't want to give you the whole chorus and everything of the, you know, the next part, but the second verse, check this out, says this, north or south or east or west, where to point your shoes? Which direction is the best? If the choosing gets confusing, maybe it's the map you're using. You don't need a chart to guide you. Close your eyes and look inside you. Hmm, really catchy song with some Pretty bad advice, actually. Um, I, I wonder how, how that would work out for someone like Pastor Dale, who travels a lot. You know, have you ever thought about this? Um, I mean, forget about Siri or Google Maps or, or even the Atlas, you know, Pocket Atlas or whatever he's got. Um, just, just trust your heart, you know, and, I, and I'm sure on that 7,920-mile trip from here to Mumbai that, um, you know, with, with multiple stops in, in different airports in foreign countries, Follow your heart. I'm sure that's, that's going to go really well for you, right? Yeah. There's an old saying back in the day that went something like this. Not. <laughs> um, so that verse that we're looking at, Proverbs 4.23, what did it say? It didn't say to follow your heart. It says, guard your heart. And, and why is that? Well, to be honest with you, it's really because our hearts on their own, they can't be trusted. Jeremiah 17, 9 says this, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Proverbs 14, 12 says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. Again, on our own, our hearts can't be trusted. Not only that, they're also very vulnerable. 1 Peter 5.8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. 
Now, I want you to think just for a moment about this, this whole concept of guarding for a second, okay? There are really basically two types of guards that are out there in the world. There are, are the guards who are protecting, protecting something or somebody from outside threats, from people, you know, from the outside bad people or bad things getting in, okay? Kind of like the palace guards at Buckingham Palace, okay? There's a couple of them standing there, all right? So you got that kind of guard. And then you have the guards that are, that are keeping bad people or bad things from getting out, right? Like, like a prison guard. Where our hearts are concerned, folks, we really need both kinds of guarding going on. We need, we need God and his spiritual armor to protect our hearts against the attacks of our enemy, the outside threat. And we also need God and, and the transforming power of his gospel to change our attitudes, our thoughts, and our behaviors from the inside out. Luke 6.45 says that a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart for out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. One of the main ways that we protect important things and people is by asking someone with experience who is trustworthy to watch over them, to guard them. And experience, of course, is, is gained by, by doing something, working at it diligently. And that's why our law enforcement officers and our military, they, they practice and they train and they train and they train over and over and over again doing the things that they need to do so that when they're put on the front lines of defense, they can do their job and do it well. Trust, trust is, is earned by doing the right thing over and over and over again. So one of the smartest moves that we can make with our hearts is to entrust it to Jesus because he is both the experience and he's also trustworthy because Jesus walked this planet, you guys, way before we did. I mean, he actually set foot, he walked on this earth as a person. And so he has the experience. And not only that, but he created the very ground that he walked on as part of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so he has the experience to take care of our hearts. He also is trustworthy. He has shown himself to be faithful over and over and over again by fulfilling his promises to millions of people throughout the course of time. So one of the best things that we can do to guard our hearts is to entrust it with Jesus. And this is, this is kind of where we camped, camped you know, with the whole kids this last week. You guys are getting a short and condensed version because this was nine chapel session with them, okay? Um, so, but... but um, we want to guard our hearts. We would need to entrust it to Jesus by becoming a Jesus follower. And this week at camp, many of the kids that were there made that decision for the very first time. And it was so cool to see both in the, in the younger kids and the teens also to see that. And you guys probably saw up there on that slideshow, there's a, this big, huge black bell right there at the end. At the camp, that's what they call the victory bell. And they say, come and ring this bell. If you've made a major decision in your life, if you've accepted Christ, become a follower for the first time, you get to ring the bell. And it is loud. <laughs> it is awesome. It rocks the whole camp. If you made another major decision in your life, you get to come and ring the bell. And you know what? There was a lot of bell ringing going on this last week. Praise the Lord, man. It is awesome. <laughs> Wednesday night was, our, was kind of our challenge night with the kids, with the fourth through sixth graders. And, uh, and so at the end of that time, we designated three corners for them to go to in the room based on the decision that they were going to be making. And we said, okay, first corner, go to this corner. If this is the first time that, that you are deciding to become a, a Christ follower. And the second corner was, hey, you want to go to this corner if you are deciding to make your faith your own. These are for the, this is for the kids who have kind of grown up in church, you know, and they've, they've been in church every Sunday. Like me, I was, you know, from the first Sunday I was born, I was one of those guys, you know, my grandpa was the pastor, you know, and so my family was there, and I was on the front row, you know, every Sunday, and, you know, I also had my dad being the worship leader, so there was like two sets of eyes on the pulpit at all times. I couldn't get away with anything. So, but I was one of those, I was one of those kids. I was one of those guys that, you know what, I, you know, for, for a while there, I was, I was kind of piggy backing on the faith of my parents. 
And, and so there were a lot of kids, there were a lot of kids that were at camp this week that were in the same boat. And I said, hey, if this is the time that you want to make your faith your own and say, I'm going to do this, I'm gonna, I need to start doing this thing for myself. This, this connection needs to be real between me and God. Then go to this corner. And the third corner, we said, go, go to this corner if you're going to decide tonight that you know what? You've done the decision thing. You've become a Christ follower and you're making your faith your own, but you want, you want Jesus to be the Lord of your life, to be everything, to, to be the main thing in your life from now forward, including your career someday. And you know what? Guys, I wasn't counting because I was praying with a lot of kids that night. I don't know if anybody was counting, but there were a lot of decisions made that night and it was, it was inspiring. And so, and so I am so glad that I get to stand here with you guys this morning and, and report all this to you because I believe that God is doing a work in the hearts and lives of our young people. And you know what? He doesn't want to stop there. He wants to continue to fan that flame and, and to spread it throughout everybody, throughout this room here and everybody that we're connected to. And so I'm hoping this morning that, um, that you guys can share in some of that joy and some of that enthusiasm that, that came along with this. I'm going to ask the house lights to come up for a little bit. And, and uh, you campers, salts, counselors, I'm gonna, if any of you guys, I'm going to ask you to be bold and be brave for a second, okay? If you were at, at any of the camps this year at, uh, out at, at Covenant Hills Camp, could you just stand up on your feet for a minute, please? I want everybody to get, get eyes on you for just a second. Okay? All right. So... Here's the thing. I want to ask you one more question. And, and I want you guys, again, to step out and be bold and be brave just for a second. And let us, by a show of hands, if you could please, to challenge us and to encourage us all in our own faith. Could you raise your hand if you were bold enough to make a major decision in, in your life sometime at camp this, this, any time this past summer? Guys, look around. Everybody look around. Okay? Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. You can have a seat. God is alive and well and moving at Waypoint, you guys. And what you guys just did was a public declaration of your faith. And there are others in this room who need to make those same kind of decisions that they've made to take that next step in their faith. And I don't know what that step looks like for you. For some in this room, it may be like that first corner saying, hey, I need to start this relationship with Jesus. I need to, I need to start checking it out by becoming a Jesus follower and just finding out what it's about. And there may be some of you who, who may be like in that second corner and say, you know what? I've been doing this church thing for a long time, like you know, my parents before me, but I need to make it my own. And then, and then there may be some that are in that third corner saying, you know what, I've been, doing, I've been following Jesus for a long time, but I got to admit, there are areas in my life that I have never said, God, you can have that. I'm going to give that to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust you with that area of my life. So I want you guys to let the kids, the teens, be your inspiration today to make a decision to say, hey, things need to be different in my life. I want, to, I, want to, I want to move forward in this thing. I want to not only guard my heart, but I want to give it to God. As one of those steps, one of you, for, for some of you guys, the teens that are here and, and somebody else in, in the room, I just want to make this, this next step challenge also. And that is that a public declaration of faith can also be a baptism. And so we, we have baptism services here every once in a while, and we are looking forward to our next one. And so if you're at that point in your life where, you know what, you, you're realizing that I want to let everybody know that I'm a follower of Jesus, and I've not, and I've not been baptized, you know, at least not that I can remember, um, then, then you know what, this might, be, this might be the time in you, for you, in your life to step forward and say, I think I'm ready to be baptized. And if that's you, I want to just encourage you or any of those other decisions you're making in your life, in your life I want to encourage you to see either me or Pastor Chris. And, uh, and uh, we, will, we will start walking you through next steps for each of those. What I'd like to do is I'd just like to wrap up this morning. I want to pray, I want to pray for our teens, for all of them that have been at camp, teens and the kids, everybody that's, that's been out there at the camp, and then also for the rest of us as we walk forward in our journey. And above all else, guard our hearts because everything that we do flows from them. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just, uh, we, again, we want to thank you for this beautiful day, for a time that we can come together and celebrate 
the work that you're doing in the lives of, of, of our family. And God, specifically, we're talking about our kids and our teens who've been spending time out at camp. And again, we've got, we've got another crew that's going out just even this, this upcoming week. And we want to just lift them up. We want to praise your name for, for what you're doing in their lives and just ask that you would continue to walk with them through these steps of faith, encouraging them and challenging them as they grow. And God, as we lift them up, we just want to lift up the rest of this family as well and just say, help us. Help us to identify that, what that next step of faith looks like in our lives. And through your power, have the courage to take that next step of faith. And God, we look forward to, to seeing someday in heaven many, many, many decisions that have been made for you and, and the people that have been reached and affected by the ministry of your Holy Spirit. And through this church here, God, let us be a light to your world. Go with us now through this wonderful day. God, we pray in your precious holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, you guys. You are dismissed. <laughs>